Good day, everyone. Um, the first question you probably are asking yourself is, why is this guy talking about food? He's a lawyer. Um, and that's a good question. And that's actually, it's actually the one that I asked myself when I was offered this talk. But you know, when you're offered to talk about a TEDx, you don't really say no. So you say yes. And then I figured it out a bit later. Um, the thing is that if you ask any of my friends or people who actually know me here, they're probably going to tell you I'm a foodie. And it's the truth. 12 years ago, I was not. And that's something that not a lot of people actually know. 12 years ago, I was a guy who ate around 10 different things altogether. Pork, if it's a really nice cut, a really nice cut of beef, potatoes, that was vegetables, um, a carrot, three to five times a year. Um, I was, I was really at war with tomatoes and cherry tomatoes and salads and fruit. I could eat strawberries from time to time. Um, loved cheese. I was, and I still am, in love with chocolate, which you can see, obviously. Um, and 12 years ago, I was attending a dinner that a family of a friend of mine organized. And something changed. We were in the middle of the Alps in Austria. The closest store is probably 50 kilometers away, and it's winter. Um, and everything that they have prepared throughout the day for the dinner didn't belong on my 10 items list of pre approved Urosh food. And I'm not a person to go hungry to bed. So I decided that, you know what? These people have been preparing this food for the whole day. So I might as well give it a try. And that's exactly what happened. I tried and I was blown away. I actually loved everything that they prepared. Everything. And I had a brain freeze for a moment because my brain was like, this is not on your list. This is not how it works. And then, but my mouth was experiencing new sensations. And if I were to tell you what I ate, it was a soup. <laughs> it wasn't anything super spectacular. It was onion soup. But it was beautiful. And it changed the way that I think about food. And in the past... 12 years, I actually changed my attitude to exploring as much different food as I can. Two years ago, I started Gastro Balkan, uh, which you heard what it is about, but it actually gave me an opportunity to host foreigners who come to Belgrade and to show them food. It's very hard to talk about food because what you guys are thinking about now is food and you're not really fully focusing on what I'm saying, uh, which is both good and bad. Uh, I'm also the last panelist before lunch. So at one point in time, you're gonna start feeling hungry and we'll be talking about delicious bites. So if by the end of this talk, you think it was mediocre or even bad, remember you were hungry, so it's okay. Um, but the food that we'll be talking about today is not just the food we eat. Um, global village effect, and this is a throwback to the topic of TEDx in Mokrin last year. Mokrin is a global village for many different reasons. From the perspective of food, in a supermarket outside of Mokrin House, you can find noodles, soy sauce, Indian spices, curry, maybe even wasabi from time to time. 50 years ago, it was impossible to imagine that, that in a store in a village in North Serbia, you can find all international foods you can possibly think of. On a different scale, and this is where the numbers come in, and this is important because, you know, in every good TEDx talk um, should have numbers. 1.3 billion international tourists arrivals in 2017. 881 billion USD, that's almost a trillion dollars, eating out expenditure only in Europe. In the Americas, it's above that. Three meals per day. And if you're anything like me, probably more than three meals a day. So every individual who was traveling to a country, let's imagine Serbia, 
was thinking about having breakfast, lunch, and dinner somewhere outside. You don't really cook when you're traveling. You want to experience what the place has to offer. And that is when I realized something. Starts like the beginning of a joke, but this is actually how one of my very first tours happened. Six complete strangers walk into a restaurant and I serve them some bites that I pre-selected for them. And I imagined the following scenario. If the six of them, and me included, if we didn't speak the same language, how would we communicate? Is there a way to do it? And I can tell you that it is. There is a way. Because I served this. Um, it looks better on a smaller screen, and it even tastes better in real life. But what they got is, we're going to talk about it in more detail, so be prepared. If you start getting hungry, get a bit of water. Um, these are prunes, or dried plums, which is probably the national fruit of Serbia, if we can say it like that. It's stuffed with kajmak, which is this super buttery textured cheese. Very delicious. If you haven't tried it, you really need to. It's rolled in bacon. This is where it gets really good. And then it's put on a grill. And then the stuff underneath is almond puree. So you have a perfect combination of something that is savory, a bit sweet, creamy, cheesy. There are nuts because of the almond. There is crisp because of the bacon. You start imagining, right? <laughs> and then you have a bite of that. Six complete strangers have a bite of this. And let's still imagine that they don't speak the same language. All you hear is, wow. And all of a sudden, there is understanding. Six people fully understand the moment. The food takes you to a certain place. You feel the flavor, you feel the explosion in your mouth, you feel everything that this bite has to offer. And it's amazing. This is a kind of emotion that every good dish in celebrated restaurants actually has. It takes you back to a point in time. It's transformative. It puts you in a spot. It reminds you of your grandmother's meal or meals, if we are to listen to how words grandmother prepared meals. It reminds you of a childhood memory. It reminds you of a moment that you've been on a date with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or you know, your friend. You enjoyed something. That is the power of food. But the problem with this is that this is not a complete picture. And this is where I would like to draw some conclusions. This is where I realized that this and the taste is not enough. Or not that it's not enough. There is more to this. Let's assume that each of you has tried this. And then I tell you, you see, the kaimak that is stuffed in the plum is made by a family in Kraljevo, which is a city south of Belgrade, and probably a region that is most famous for really good kaimak. And they've been having a tradition of making this food, this particular food item, for over 50 years. And they deliver it fresh to the restaurant every three days. Plums? are from a local farmer outside of Belgrade, in Grodzka. And he's been having those plum trees for over 75 years, him and his family. Bacon comes from a farm near Zlatibor, where pigs are free range. They run, somebody even reads poetry to them, and I kid you not, this is the truth. They listen to good music, they eat very healthy, and they enjoy their life to a certain point in time, and then we continue enjoying the bite. The purpose of this is now you understand a bit more. It's not just the flavors. There is more information. And then it creates a longer-lasting memory. 
It's about, and if you take anything away from this talk, it's about experience. And I managed to see that showing people what food in Serbia is about. It's about the experience. And I managed to break this into three segments. Emotion, which is something that we talked about, and hopefully you believe me that this was as delicious as it was, and it always takes me back. But it's also about culture. The culture food of a place that is showcasing history, traditions, habits, the way that we cultivate, the way that we think about food, the way that we inherit the way the traditions that the food is prepared. And it's also about origin. Where does the produce come from? Who made it? Is it a local farm? Is it sustainably made? These are all the information that are part of the package. And if we are being very honest, we don't always think about all of these things when we go for a dinner. How many of you think about all of these things when you go for a dinner, by show of hands? That's the thing. We don't, but we can. And I would say this is where the concept should change. All of these photos taken by me showcase a different element of what local food can offer. The photo up there was taken to the, all the way up left, was taken in Mokrin. We were preparing for a photo camp, a lunch, uh, for actually a dinner for all the participants and taking food photos. And it's local produce. Everything is from a farm that is actually just outside of this house, around the corner. That's where majority of food comes from. And if you want, you can actually go there and see it for yourself. You can pick some of the vegetables that goes into your plate. The second photo up is vegetables that uh, at a food stand where I actually buy my produce in a local green farmer's market in Belgrade, Bailoni of a Piazza or Bailoni's Market. And I've been going to that same stand for probably past 10 to 15 years. And if we count the fact that my mother and my grandmother used to go to the same woman, um, now her daughter, for the fresh produce, there is a long-standing family tradition about it. This is a tart that is prepared by a patisserie chef in Belgrade. A fine dining dish um, that consists of ricotta cheese, which is not necessarily Serbian, but it consists of the pumpkin that is local, of local truffles, of local sage, of local mushrooms, blended together in a perfect mix. This is a burger that is made of salmon. Salmon, obviously, something is not that we can find in Serbia, running on a farm or anywhere else, so you have to import that. But everything else is Serbian. It's beetroot, homemade bread, salad, and this is duck. All the ingredients are local. All the ingredients are local. So if you ask me what the future of dining is, I would tell you it's not global. The future of dining is local. And the future of dining is changing the perception of the food that we eat so that we know where the produce comes from, who made it, and go for the food experiences that will be well-rounded and balanced. And I have three and a half minutes more to talk about this, but I can also leave you with a thought. Next time you want to go for a food experience for dining, think about these elements and think how you can incorporate that and support local production, local creation, local chefs, and tour guides, that would be me, and go for an experience because the food can play into your emotions, can tell you the culture of a place, and it can help you better understand how it got into your plate. Thank you very much. Uh, now I think it's time for lunch.